This program was paid for by Water of Life Church. From Water of Life Ministries in Plano, Texas, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is speaking through his servants to the world. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying today. Let us join Doyle Davidson and others of Water of Life, sowing the Word of God in spirit and in truth. Hello, I'm Doyle Davidson, servant and apostle, the Lord Jesus Christ, ministering locally to the body of Christ in Dallas and Fort Worth, Texas, sent by God to your house to preach the gospel to you. Amen. First Corinthians 15, 3 and 4, tell us what the gospel is, how that Jesus Christ died for our sins, according to Scripture, he was buried, he rose again, third day, according to Scripture. Spirit of the Lord's upon me. He's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, set me to heal the broken heart, preach deliverance to the captives, recover sight to the blind, set at liberty, that bit of bruise. The word is lively. Keep it in your heart and your mouth. There's a word of faith which I preach. You confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You shall be saved with the heart, mind, believe it, unto righteousness with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. I'm not ashamed the gospel of Christ is the power of God unto salvation. Never want to believe it to the Jew first, also to the Greek therein. It's the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by his faith. I want to welcome everyone receiving this broadcast on live stream, Roku, Apple TV, YouTube, or other devices. Thank God. On my right, co host, Terry Brown. Good morning. Good morning. Amen. On my left, co-host Kathy Davidson. Good morning. Good morning. And on Kathy's left, Anthony Reese, co-host, apostle. Good morning. Good morning. I got it out. We got it mixed up. Amen. I believe it's time, the O, to address the wire in Colorado, Catherine Coop, courier. <laughs> Good morning. Do you hear that smooth shift? Uh-huh. <laughs> Already in slip? Yeah. <laughs> my, my, my mind is coming back to me. Thank God. Amen. Is it time for the My Girls? Amen. I think so. Let's have
Amen. Katie. Yes, sir. It is written in the book of Revelation about the earth is going to experience death, I believe it is, four different ways. Oh. One of them is Is that right? That is right. Is that Revelation what? I think it's six. Six is what I think. Two of us agree we're going to be all right. Yes, it's verse 8, chapter 6. It says, And I looked, and behold, a pale horse. And his name that sat on him was death, and hell followed with him. And the power was given unto him, and given unto them over the fourth part of the earth, to kill with the sword, and with hunger, and with death, and with beasts of the earth. Okay, I told you I wouldn't do this, but I'm going to. You know, God changes me. I believe that you read at least part of an article of lions killing people in Kenya. Right. Famous lion story. Do what? It was a famous story back in 1898. 18? 1898. Is that right? Mm -hmm. That far back. And they killed a lot of people. Right. Yeah. Two lions. Huh? Two lions. I uh, think the area was, they, they even made a movie out of it. T S A V A, or A V O, the Lions of Tsavo. They, um, they were construction workers building the railroad, and they were in Kenya uh, in an area, and a lion came in and took a man out of the tent at night, killed him, and ate him. And they couldn't get it stopped. The lions, they, they put up blockades. The lions would get through the blockades. And um, I can't remember how many people the lions killed. In fact, the, the construction workers, they ran. They, they left the area because they couldn't stop them. And I think it was finally, it went on for eight months, I think, before they finally got both lions killed. And if you know anything about history, it, the lions didn't just get shot once to kill them. The lions were shot multiple times, still trying to kill until they could get it, until they could get, get them both dead. And as soon as the, it was Patterson, I think, was the leader of, the, of all the construction workers. He was the one that was responsible for the, the death of the lions. And he hit up in a tree, and as, the first time he shot the first lion, the lion immediately spent the rest of his time after Patterson. And, and he was in danger, but he managed to get both lions dead after multiple guns and multiple shots and things like that. I know you keep up with things well. God certainly moved you to my house as a prophetess a woman that is a good mind, keen mind, one that studied things over the years. And I want you to help me. Uh, Luther brought out, brought forth in English uh, 500 years ago, what? The 95 Thesis, that was in Germany. That's what? That was in Germany. And what did he bring out? He brought out his 95, I think it's called Thesis, or his 95 points. And he was, he was confronting the Catholic Church with questions. And in those 95 points, he made the comment, it is justification by faith, not by works, not by money. Did, did he just bring out uh, the portion of the Bible in English? He, no, what he did was he, then they put him, he had to go in hiding because of that. Right. He translated the, the Bible into common German. The Bible. Right. And about the same time, Tyndale also took on the English Bible. 
It was already, I think by that time, I think the Geneva Bible was out. Same time, it happened right around the same time that Luther was translating into German, the English Bible was coming forth. So Luther translated it into German. Common German. Common German. Yes. Okay. The, the comment was made that the farmer could read it. Well, you know, my grandmother, Miller, is German. Amen. My mother must be half. So I must be what? Quarter? Amen. I don't know if <laughs> I don't know if the laboratories agree with that. <laughs> I think days. they said you're about nine percent German. <laughs> you know what I know I've told you about laboratories. Yeah. My opinion. Amen. Anyway. So then, what did you say, Tyndall? Tyndall was one of the ones that translated the Bible into English. I believe the Geneva Bible might have been by that time. There were a couple, but Tyndale was also working on it. Okay. And then after that, the King James Version. Okay. And that was about, or, or following, Luther's work, right? Or... Yes. Well, Luther started it, but it, it just didn't travel. It actually happened about the same time. Once Luther put those up, um, even that same spirit that had Luther do that was working already in Scotland and Wales and England. And so you can see it's a move of God. It wasn't just, you know, one man did it and then word got around. It right. was, it was God. happening at the same time. God was doing it. God was, there was a, a revival. All right. I'm going to ask a, a question by an amateur. The book of Revelation was written by John, right? John the Revelator? Right. On the Isle of Patmos. Who? On the Isle of Patmos. And is that the Apostle John? Yes. The last one alive. All right. Uh, so what you're reading to us out, and by the way, Terry's sitting over here with a yes. <clears throat> uh, what you're reading to us out of the book of Revelation, do you know if that was part of what John put in? Yes, the whole book was written by John. Because you hear John through it all. There are instances where John and an angel are talking. And there's conversation between John and the angels. John and who? The angels. Exactly. Well, you see, I don't think very many people know anything about the book of Revelation. I don't think they have the courage to say it if they do. But since you came into my life in a more, well, you know, for years, you and I talked about five times. Right. Right? Right. And we talk about five times a day now. No, we talk at 5 a.m. now. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh, it seems to me that what is written there in Revelation by John, they call him, where I went to church, John the Revelator, is that right? Amen. I've heard of that. I've heard of him referred to as that way too. Okay. Uh, so this stuff has been recorded. What's amazing about what John wrote is it works with what Daniel wrote. I mean, those two, obviously God gave prophecy to what was going to happen in the end times, and they match up. All right. I'm sorry. Can I read something real quick? Um, uh, sure. In the first part of Revelation... 
that says the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass, and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. Now, my ears are good for you. But just, you, just reading the first part of this right. in Revelation, see, I mean, the, the title in my Bible says the revelation of St. John the Divine. But the verse says, verse 1 says, the revelation of Jesus Christ, yeah. which God gave unto him right. to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified by his angel unto his servant John. So this is Jesus Jesus. His revelation right. that he uh, sent his angel to show unto John, Amen. to show to all of his servants, to us. Amen. Okay, that's the way I understand it. Right. I just wanted to well, throw you. that out there. Thank you. Amen. We're all up here to be one. Right. It's interesting when you read the de when you read the description that. The Apostle Paul, I mean, the Apostle John gives of Jesus when Jesus was talking about the stars and, and showed himself to John. It's not that far off from the man, Jesus, that Daniel saw. Right, right. I mean, there's some real similar aspects. You know, when Daniel saw him, he couldn't, he couldn't get off the floor. All right, I'm going to stretch out here. So... Prior to 500 years ago, the words that, that you read, read to us today was not open to the English people. Right. It, it got lost. Think they went to Latin. I believe it wasn't long after the year 300, I think, is when the, 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 the Roman church, the Catholic church, took over the land. And everything was put into Latin. Right. And it was kept in Latin. And, and the funny thing was, they translated it from the Greek and the Hebrew to Latin. But the Latin, with what these translators found out was, they didn't translate it right. They didn't translate it true. The Latin was whatever they wanted it to be. And that's what was in the Catholic Church at the time. And that's why... It, it was heresy, and it almost got Luther's head cut off when he translated it from the Latin, from the original Greek to the common German. It wasn't the Latin that he translated it from. Okay. So it wasn't just the English, it was the German, it was really anyone on earth that didn't know Latin right. did not have the Bible. And they didn't even have printing presses back then. So the, so the Bible was, the, the Latin Bible was in the church. And the common man could not read it, couldn't even understand it. Well, you see how the devil's plan, Satan's plan, gave rise to they, the people had to listen to what the church said the Bible said. They couldn't see and check it out for themselves. And... And we've certainly seen that true how, well, even to this day, there are many Catholics that still say that the Pope is the one that tells you what the Bible means. They don't look at it for themselves. Thank God for the movement that more and more people check it out for themselves. But, you know, I have to say, <coughs> over coming here, found that true in the Bible church because... We had teachers that went to seminary, studied Greek at great lengths, studied Hebrew at great lengths. So they were the, quote, authorities, even though the Bible was open to you and you held one in your lap as they taught, because they had studied it so in depth and, you know, with great, great length of time and great study, deep study, they had the better understanding of what the Bible meant so-called, okay? That was the spirit that is the spirit with Dallas Theological Seminary. And uh, just say it bold, straight, plain. That's the spirit with Bible churches 
and and the preachers, you know, I have more understanding than you because I studied original languages. And uh, when I came here and you told us that the Bible was written, uh, originally said fourth grade reading level, and then someone from the Gideon Bibles came along and told you it was a fifth grade reading level. So you said, okay, I'll take that. But once you know, once you and I, us people, common, everyday people know the Bible is written on a fifth grade reading level, you can read it, see what it means for yourself. And most of it is pretty clear. Simple words. Amen? Sure. Yes. You've probably heard that I'm a, a deep researcher. Yes. <clears throat> Was in college. <clears throat> Is it true that when you say Bible church, does that include Dallas Theological Seminary? Absolutely. Dallas Theological Seminary is the authority or the top authority for Bible churches. That's where Bible church preachers... Now, Bible churches are not an official denomination like Baptist or Methodist or Lutheran, um, but Dallas Theological Seminary uh, ordains ministers and then Bible churches... Uh, normally we'll have a, a minister a minister that's come through Dallas Theological Seminary, sometimes other seminaries, uh, Fuller Seminary sometimes, <clears throat> okay. but, uh, but Dallas Theological Seminary is looked to one of the top authorities for the doctrine that not just Bible churches, but evangelicals. You'll find many evangelical churches that adhere to the doctrines put out, put forth by Dallas Theological Seminary. Amen. Well, I want, you know, I like to be accurate. And uh, that helps because that was my understanding. You know, I've been in the ministry here in Dallas Fort Worth since 1980, well, 81 in this building. Amen. The the term evangelicals, the, in, in, some of you, everyone may know this, but I'll just put this out there in case you don't. Evangelicals is a broad name for people adhering to a, a general scope of a, a doctrine. I won't say it's completely identical among everyone, but uh, it will cross even some denominations. But evangelicals generally hold to certain doctrines just as spirit-filled people, charismatic people tend to hold to certain doctrines. And you spent 11 years in what kind of a church that was associated with this? It was a Bible church and was often considered among Bible churches as the one that had the uh, staunchest teaching. It was lots of teaching. And some Bible churches, uh, well, they they take on the um, the spirit that they want. Like some of them want to be more family oriented. Some of them want to be more this or that, whatever. And they'll they used to say about the one I attended, well, it was just too cold and not friendly, and uh, you know didn't have enough for families. It was so much emphasis on teaching, but um, the the professor at Dallas Theological Seminary, he was considered the Greek scholar, Dr. S. Lewis Johnson. He was a, a renowned Greek scholar. Was his name Johnson? S. Lewis Johnson was his name. He was a professor at DTS for, I believe, 25 years, many years. Was looked to by people that knew Greek, not just DTS, but people that knew Greek as a Greek scholar. And he was the lead teaching elder. That's what they called him in Bible church, right. our Bible church anyway. And he was you there. Think we should, oh, pardon me. I'm done. You think we should move on to praise and worship? <laughs> Overcome some of this. Huh? <laughs> what? Overcome some of this, put some more of this out. <laughs> Let's go.
and it was dark in my heart. You brought light to me, a child of darkness became a child of light. And when my soul was so Saying it's no 
in me Greater is he that is in me Greater is he that is in me Than he that is in the world Greater is he that is in me Greater is he that is in me a roaring lion roaming to and fro seeking whom he may devour the Bible tells me so many souls have been his prey caught in some weak hour but God has given us today his overcoming power greater is he that is in me greater is he that is in me greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world on that day of Pentecost a mighty rushing wind blew into the upper room to baptize all of them with a power greater than anyone had known and I'm so glad we got it too I want to tell the whole wide world now tell them with me greater is he that is in me greater is he that is in me greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world God is greater than the wisest man greater than the power of sin greater than the gates of hell greater than anyone can tell greater than the richest king greater than anything greater oh greater greater yes greater the Lord yeah. so amen. Amen. amen we're getting stronger folks amen. and bolder amen. and watch watch just ahead of us amen. kingdom greater greater kingdom greater power. The kingdom is power. Gospel of the kingdom is power. Amen. Get ready. We're going to see it wherever we are. Mercy, grace, mercy, grace, mercy, grace, mercy, grace, be bold unto you through the knowledge of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. We invite you to visit Water of Life Church at 1621 18th Street in Plano, Texas. Or for further information, call area code 972-578-8082. That's 972-578-8082. Or write Doyle Davidson, Post Office Box 861327, Plano, Texas, 75086. That's Doyle Davidson, Post Office Box 861327, Plano, Texas, 75086. This program was paid for by Water of Life Church.